Hi everyone, here comes another recap about a very interesting tournament uh, that I took part in and won another world championship title. Well, a world rapid team chess championship title to be precise. So let's uh, have a look how it all went and uh, what was this competition all about. It was, as I said, a rapid team championship that took place at the end of August 2023 in Dusseldorf and it was a, a first of a kind event of uh, with such with such regulations and such teams because well because because the tournament was played in 12th round using the Swiss so-called Swiss uh, uh, system and teams they it was possible to make up teams not connected with countries but in any possible way i mean it can it could be club members members of different federations or any other chess players and what another very special uh, and important rule about uh, this tournament that each uh, team was supposed to have at least six players, one of which had to be a woman, and the other one uh, was supposed to be a player of the rating of not over 2000. So that gave the tournament uh, quite a twist because uh, amateur, uh, chess players and also yeah that's exactly that the regulations uh, were playing alone with top grandmasters and uh, well there were certain things that uh, were hard to control but I was playing for a team WR chess team that had quite a lineup uh, we had Wesley So playing on the first board, uh, then Abdu Sator of Noderbeck, Jan Nipomnishi, Jan Krzysztof Duda, Pragnan Nanda, uh, Winston Kamer, Hoi Fang, um, me, myself, and Vadim Rosenstein, who um, happened to be a sponsor of the whole event, as well as our team. And, well, he trained very hard. I think he was uh, uh, preparing for this event for uh, like almost a year. Uh, because he wanted um, help, he wanted to help his team to win uh, this uh, World uh, Rapid uh, Team Championship. It was his goal, and well, I must say that uh, he succeeded. He succeeded, and uh, WR Chess team won the event with one round to spare. We won, uh, but okay, we managed to make a draw in the last round as well. And with uh, 22 uh, match points out of 24 possible, so two points for each uh, victory in the match, uh, we made two draws and um, 10 uh, wins. We took the first, the clear first uh, place, followed by the team of freedom, uh, led by Vishwanathan Anand, not other as uh, Vishwanathan Anand. And uh, team MGD1 took bronze, also a very strong team that mostly had Indian players except uh, Mamadzada Gunai from Azerbaijan. Um, and well, a few other teams. Uh, well, the team of Armenia, for example, they took the fourth place, but um, they made a draw with us. We had a very tough match with them, but okay, team events, it's a very special and um, sometimes uh, quite difficult to predict a uh, situation where you can have as many strong players as you uh, wish to but something just doesn't click doesn't perform well and uh, you cannot uh, you cannot uh, achieve what you are striving to achieve but yeah as i said lwr chess team 
we managed to finish in the first place and some of our players uh, took uh, the medals uh, let's see some videos some small short videos um, from the FIDE official FIDE uh, YouTube channel and the video from the closing ceremony and then we'll get we'll get into chess into chess and I'll tell you my chess story about this event yes I managed some of our players uh, did play wonderfully and did help uh, the team a lot I also took part in this competition I played uh, six out of uh, 12 games and let's have a look at these games in my first uh, game of this event I played uh, with black against a young uh, player from India Priyanka Nutaki well it wasn't the best uh, game of of my career let's put it clearly even though I managed to uh, equalize uh, pretty pretty convincingly in the um, after the opening and even I think I had great chances to uh, counterplay somewhere but somehow instead of playing very simple moves like castle knight h5 and f5 I decided to do something very complicated and then another wrong decision in this game another wrong decision of mine was uh, this pawn move that I decided to make e4 connected with uh, exchanging on b4 um, okay sometimes uh, these such pawn moves can bring you some space and initiative but in that case this pawn started to be a headache for me and I uh, needed to pay attention to protecting this pawn and my opponent somehow just got a an easier um, play and um, I was not precise here somewhere here around uh, the spawn i mean i had some possibilities to uh, protect it to still keep it on the board for example rook a3 is a nice move with the idea of capturing on d3 if she captures with a knight or on capturing on c3 if she captures with a bishop so rook a3 was a very interesting possibility that i missed i played rook a8 and i it would have been much better to uh, sacrifice a pawn uh, by playing knight h5 for example B but okay i didn't want to play with a pawn down and i decided to sacrifice a queen why not but it uh, was not enough uh, my compensation for the queen is not enough here and uh, why i just had to play king f2 at some point protecting this square that um, wouldn't she shouldn't have allowed my rook to get to e1 because after white allowed to play uh, black to play rook e1 then okay things started to uh, be tricky and you see that the time control of this event was 15 minutes plus 10 seconds and while playing on seconds uh, against this past pawn um, it's not that easy and yeah at the end h4 is a mistake because I'm able here to equalize by playing d2 using the fact that after queen d2 rook c2 wins the queen after h5 a very beautiful and very important move bishop b1 still keeping this possibility of rook c2 on the board that's very important and crucial after uh, queen d2 rook c2 uh, happened in the game and it led us to an equal uh, knight's endgame we played for a few more moves but okay uh, this endgame uh, is uh, should be a draw and that's exactly how the game ended in a draw so that was the first uh, uh, my first game of the event it was quite shaky I must say and actually I was not so sure about my playing conditions because uh, we did have a, a short training session with the team before the start of the event and I did have a chance to play with Hovi Fine a few training games and I blundered severely in all of this game so uh, I was like pretty cautious about uh, um, my readiness uh, to play 
Um, and when you're playing for a team, you know, you're always scared that uh, you might uh, do something that uh, will let your team down. And um, okay, but in the first game, so there were three uh, competitions uh, days and we played uh, four rounds each day. Uh, and basically, I think in every single uh, day, uh, I played two games and Hoyufani also played two. And uh, in the first game, it happened. It happened to be that uh, two of my first games were played with black pieces. But okay, I didn't mind playing with black as long as Hoyufani kept winning with white. And in my second game of the day, it was. Uh, uh, I, I also was playing with. Um, Black against uh, Alexandra Malcevska. She re she's representing Poland these days. So bishop c4, knight f6, bishop's opening, d3, bishop c5. I played uh, because well, there are some other possibilities, of course. Uh, but knight c6, knight c6 is one of the uh, like most common move. But since this pawn is not being attacked by white. Uh, I don't see a reason to play knight c6 straight away. Uh, after knight f3, I will of course consider this move. Uh, but if not, otherwise, I have I want to have this plan in mind, c6, d5. So I want to develop my pieces quite flexibly. Knight c3, castle, f4, uh, quite uh, an aggressive line. And uh, there are several interesting possibilities for black. Mm after f4 and I opted for the most also aggressive as well so white plays aggressively I played very aggressively as well d5 but when you make this move of course it looks very nice because the king white's king is still in the center I have all those ideas with knight g4 knight f2 but but there is a but uh, my opponent blundered severely here he takes d5 but in fact the theory suggests white to capture on d5 with her knight and the idea behind this move that here after knight g4 black actually loses because after f5 knight f2 queen h5 it's actually a very poisonous trap i must say when playing uh, with white because it seems so you know so um interesting for black to try to win this rook but in fact black's king turns out to be in a very very unpleasant situation after knight h1 bishop g5 and the game is practically over f6 is not possible because of knight f6 queen h7 and if the queen goes away well, to d6 there will be some kind of jumps to e7 and here knight f6 wins just wins the game and queen g5 queen g7 checkmate so after knight d5 knight takes d5 uh, black has to be very careful not to play knight g4 i think the main move the main theoretical move is bishop e6 and okay uh a long 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 uh theoretical line uh comes but as i said yeah my opponent blundered to e, e takes d5 and that already gives me a possibility to play knight g4 there is no f5 after that but rook e8 to tell you the truth is even stronger than knight g4 it's okay why just you know opened up the e file where her king stands and um, well it's very unpleasant to play uh, with such a king uh, on the open file okay knight g4 is also a good move but here uh, white could have and actually should have played knight e4 protecting uh, the square on uh, f2 and attacking my bishop at the same time but okay i could still play something like e takes f4 with the idea to play rook e8 with a very very strong compensation for the sacrificed pawn but after knight h3 the game is practically over because i give a check g3 is not possible due to queen takes h3 and after king f1 i play knight f2 and my bishop opens up and my knight gives a fork knight takes f2 is not possible due to queen takes f2 queen a1 yeah i just capture knight is protected on f2 by my two bishops uh, pieces uh, and uh, well bishop e3 just a desperate attempt to complicate but we just end up in an end game with an extra exchange what's more important for four connected past pawns on the king side so the whole king side white king side is gone 
where did all, all those points go to and yeah i just finished development uh, and uh, after some precise moves i start pushing my pawns forward and my opponent um, she forfeited on time but the position is just mm, completely lost so it was the second uh, game of the first playing day and i was happy to finish my day uh, with such a convincing victory it's very important um, not only win in teams competitions but win pretty fast and uh, yeah let's let's see i didn't want to for you i didn't want to see the board the uh, analysis because later on i will ask some questions about some possibilities and i want you i want you yeah to not to have a solution just in front of your eyes okay second game and my third game in a row was black pieces uh, was played against Harika Dranavali. She was a uh, member of uh, the MGD1 uh, team that eventually took bronze medals, a very strong team. Uh, but in this game, yeah, we can say that I was lucky in a sense that um, we played a very well known theoretical line, well, very well known for some of the players. We transposed to some kind of uh, uh, Grunfeld re reversed uh, anyway uh, it's a quite known theoretical line and here bishop f6 is considered to be more precise I believe bishop g7 is still okay and uh, there was one moment I think where I had to play rook c8 it was a little bit more precise here I played bishop f6 but okay at the end and then my opponent didn't find um, a possibility to pose any serious problems. She played e3, but here after e5 her center is attacked, and she decided to yeah, to agree on a draw by threefold repetition. And of course I was pretty happy with this result playing with black, and the team the team made uh, what was required to win this match. I must say that. Uh, um, a few team members we were lucky to have some of our team members that demonstrated just a fabulous play. Uh, another backup Dusatorov, Jan Nipomnishi, Jan Krzysztof Duda, and uh, Pragnanda, who arrived uh, after a very um, difficult uh, World Cup in Baku. He uh, skipped the first day, but then he played wonderfully in in the second and in the third day and yes some of our team members were not in their best um, shapes but again if we somehow everything worked well for our team and it's quite rare i must say that it's it's quite rare okay my next game that i like to hold my favorite talapin I wasn't very precise in the opening, to tell you the truth. I'm not very happy with my opening play, but okay, let's fast forward the opening because my opponent also didn't play very well. Uh, some mistakes um, I made. Knight e4 is not a great move because it covers the e file and it, it's not so clear what I was planning to do after queen to c7. So it's quite a shaky move, I must say. I should have played rook e1 instead first protecting my uh, pawn on e5 but here it's why to move and i'm very proud of uh, my decision here it's not a tactical shot but it's a positional idea uh, that gave me um, a lot of positive emotions let's say uh, i uh, figured out that okay due to the fact that g6 was played the black squares are weakened and so so I can play bishop g5. I can try to exchange this bishop. And as soon as this dark squared bishop leaves the board, those um, those squares they will be they will stay on the board and they will be weak and there was there, there is not going to be a piece that protects this uh, squares. 
and that's exactly what happened so my plan here is very simple i want to go to h4 i want to attack the pawns, and if the pawn uh, goes forward it's it will be quite easy to attack the spawn structure uh, and actually the position is very very tough to protect to defend queen h4 putting some pressure some ideas in there connected with knight h7 bishop g6 e5 well just makes things even worse so knight e4 another very important exchange in this game exchanging the defender one more defender is gone and now yeah it's not clear who's gonna protect this king knight g5 bishop d5 are two threats that are very evil rook a to d8 knight g5 bishop f5 and bishop c6 yeah also i won pretty easily so the team already knew that they count they can count this point on the women's board and then one more nice victory an important victory uh, that um, i managed to bring uh, for my team it's a karakan game against elina danielian in the match it's actually our first match against armenian team that finished in a draw in this tournament but again so my my uh, one point was pretty pretty important for the team uh, elina often plays this line but i do consider it uh, this line um, as a pleasant line for uh, white because white gets a pair of two bishops yes black's position is very solid but i have two bishops on the board and i have uh, quite a, a direct plan of improving my position on the queen side and trying to open up my bishops and use their power to to win the game and that's exactly what happened so c4 c5 queen b3 attacking the pawn b7 uh, bishop e3 i could have played stronger according to the computer like a5 is a nice tactical opportunity here with the idea after bishop takes a b takes a5 to play bishop d2 bishop takes uh, a5 but okay i played you know just strategically i improved to the position of my pieces in b3 preparing protecting this uh, pawn and preparing queen b2 move that i made and you can see that my opponent was already pretty low on time falling pretty low on time two minutes versus eight because it's so much easier for black to play and after i improved my position to the maximum yeah she made a mistake she played knight to c6 and it's a tactical mistake okay bishop takes a six with the same idea i think the game is even stronger but it's so hard uh, to exchange uh, the slight squared bishop so that's why i took on c5 i exchanged and i captured on h6 and that's exactly why i started this exchanging operation because i saw that uh, this pawn on g7 protects two pieces at the same time and it brings often two problems bishop d2 knight c6 bishop c3 also quite a nice transfer of the bishop on to the long diagonal and yeah it's a small trap because again my opponent was playing on seconds and i managed to see that after queen d1 which is very tempting to make king h2 bishop takes f2 there is no checkmate the knight on e2 protects the king very well and i can grab the knight for free and after knight h5 okay queen d2 I have a piece up of course it's very important to be precise till the very end but i think i managed pretty well and i didn't blunder anything and i won the game and again uh, that helped the team uh, to save the match to play 3-3 and at the very end the very last round that i played we were already playing as world as world champions because we we knew that even if we lose this match uh, a second team a freedom team would just okay, share uh, the first by match points but they were worse on tie breaks so we were already world rapid, rapid team champions nevertheless it was important to finish well it's always important to finish well and it was a very interesting and tense game against elizabeth pets oh yeah we played many games against elizabeth I hope 
definitely gonna be uh, many more. Uh, King's Indian attack um, because well, Elizabeth is playing King's Indian defense with black uh, pieces often. So here she played it with one extra tempo. I decided to capture only four to play it safe. But then Elizabeth misplayed somewhere. She misplayed somewhere here and um, I started a very nice attack in on the queen side, b5, queen b6, and I uh, pushed my a pawn, a5, and you can see that uh, my pieces stand so much more active. Uh, knight a4, queen b5, but there was a moment in this game. I did everything very well till this point. I played c4, wonderful move. And suddenly, uh, I was calculating something like bishop of one, e5. Suddenly, Elizabeth surprised me with the move that I didn't consider. It was the move bishop takes d4. And, unfortunately, I captured on d4 automatically. And this automatism is not the right one. Okay, there are certain decisions in chess that we uh, make automatically and actually should do automatically. But... Always before making move, we should check whether there are other possibilities that might be stronger. In rapid and in blitz, it's tougher, of course, to do. But here, the moves that I missed, just mainly because I recapture it automatically, recapture it are often, they are often done in this way. But I had the possibility to win very nicely. Not so difficult to spot, especially if you ask yourself, are there any other options? For me to do and yeah there was a very strong option which is knight to g4 check with the idea after h takes g4 to take on d4 with double attack if the rook goes away then i simply capture and capture on d2 uh and there is there are no other ways to protect the rook i mean okay white can play queen e1 or queen f1 but in that case two rooks are still uh under attack I can take on g4 and still have this idea of capturing either of rooks in there as well as queen h5 and c takes b3 rook takes c2 there are many unpleasant ideas and that was winning it was a very strong possibility to win the game unfortunately i missed it and it happens often when you uh, kind of miss the strongest move your pieces start to go like in the wrong direction and white mm, it, it was so much easier from now on to play with white, although although I had to, of course, do something about this knight. I had to play knight e6 using the fact that this uh, pawn is pinned, or knight e7. Uh, but yeah, I misplayed terribly. I played bishop d5, which is a mistake because of this knight b6. And well, I ended up in a very, very tough situation. But okay, we never give up, right? Uh, we try to oppose our opponent's uh, problems despite um, the evaluation of our position. I'm a pawn down, the position is almost lost, but we're playing on... Um, it's a rapid game, so there are some chances to catch. And that's exactly what I did. I did find a very interesting uh, exchange sacrifice that gave me a possibility to create a passer past pawn and to rook and knight against this king they create some counter chances for example here quite fast i could already play something like knight king to c5 and uh, trying to support my pawn but okay i got very scared i didn't really see the point of bringing the king to c5 i was afraid of this chest but in fact here i can get back my idea is to play knight d5 and b3, b2. I cannot play knight d5 with the rook on e4. So knight uh, king to c5 was stronger. I decided to wait like here, but here my opponent find a very strong rook e1, rook b2. You see that I was playing on seconds already, so I had to make moves fast. But I managed, I managed to find some counter ideas. Rook h7 gives me a possibility to give a check. And checks are very tricky and king e4 is already a mistake but it's so hard not to make this move because suddenly after knight c6 rook b7 rook e2 it's a perpetual well black has to agree on perpetual because if she plays king g4 
there's rook g2 and king f5 uh, knight f5 checkmate uh, so a little bit had to play uh, knight g king to g3 and then i give a check and if she plays king g4 here then i have this rook e3 idea uh, and again the threat of checkmating is very very unpleasant and if she gives me checks i can you know escape from those checks her checks are not perpetual so uh white was obliged to go to f3 and we agreed on a draw i was very happy for uh, this um, uh, result so i did score four and a half uh, out of six and along with my team along with my team as i mentioned we became we became world champions and with that in mind i end up this recap uh, for the upcoming months there are not going to be recaps about uh, uh, my tournaments because well simply i'm taking two months off i'm trying to prepare for the end of the year which promises to be very busy the grand swiss is going to start at the end of october followed by the european team, team championship in november and hopefully world rapid and blitz at the very end of the year we don't hear anything yet about that tournament but nevertheless summer summer was pretty busy and it ended pretty well it's nice positive uh, memories to cherish and uh, with another world uh, rapid uh, title maybe uh, with the team maybe in rapid but still a world title is a world title right so thank you for watching and i hope to see you very soon uh, on my channel so like this video leave a comment uh, and uh, see you soon bye